So this week we're talking about how we got started with freelancing. Um, and Dalton did, you did construction or co contract, contractor type freelance work, right? Yep. So um, basically a hired, which a lot of people have done. Um, but yeah, the contractor work, either get your own jobs or work under another company for a little bit and then go get another job. But yeah. Okay. And then I did like social media, like online, the whole, what, uh, I don't know, trendy, I guess, freelancing, whatever, you know, make money online sort of stuff. Um, we're going to kind of just talk about our story on how we actually got into that. Um, so a lot of people, I, I feel like it's not as hard as people make it seem, but at the same time, you, you got to put yourself in the right place, right? So for me, whenever I first got started and in, in doing like freelance work, it, the only reason I was able to actually get clients was because I had done the work on, on the back end rather than like try to just start out and and not have any results for clients so like what i did was i initially just started with growing instagram pages facebook pages you know um for for people that was my first gig um but for that prior to that i had grown a facebook page to 10k personal facebook page i'd grown a instagram page to 10k um, I think it was at like 15 by the time I had actually started working for people like 15 or 20 and then TikTok, I think was like 60,000 YouTube. I didn't really, I wasn't on YouTube actually. So, but anyways, I had done all that stuff on the back end. I had researched and, and studied and I actually had all that like, you know, proof that I can actually do what I say I can do. Um, so I think a lot of people definitely struggle with that at the beginning where it's like, well, I don't have any testimonials or I don't have any, uh, I, like ways to show what, what I can do. But I think a lot for a lot of people, depending on what, what they have going on, you can definitely get started just by doing it for yourself and documenting it for yourself. And that be your proof, especially like if you know how things work, you can look at other people's results and be like, this is exactly how they did it and, and break it down for people to just kind of show that you know what you're doing. Um, but when I first got started, I um, I worked with a, a coach. She actually DM'd me on Instagram. and was like just having a conversation with me and um, asked if I wanted to work with him see if we can scale up my business get my first client and i was like heck that's really cool so hired him and i think i was only paying him 100 bucks a week so looking back that was pretty a pretty good deal especially for what people charge now 400 bucks a month and you know he walked me through like he audited everything helped me build out systems and um yeah and he actually hired me and I think that was actually my first client was the coach that I hired in the beginning. So it's kind of interesting how that worked out, but, um, yeah, I don't know. That's pretty cool. So like, how did you, how did you then like price things from Did Did he like help you with that of how to price different clients of what different clients want and what they don't want? Yeah. So as far as, pricing goes i feel like in the beginning you kind of just have to make it up a little bit yeah just like look around and see what other people are charging see what you feel comfortable charging because like i definitely could not have charged a lot right out the gate because i didn't have any experience at all right. um so like i think i think i only charged him like 250 bucks a month and i did a post a day i did like I ran ads for him. Like it was a lot of stuff for 250 bucks. And like looking back on that now after the government like taxes you, that was like 200 bucks, you know, <laughs> like yeah. a whole lot of hours. Yeah. Um, but like, 
at first, like obviously you're not gonna be able to charge a lot right out the gate until you get that experience, but eventually you price it more on like obviously the time it takes a little bit, but but more so the value that it brings to the person. Um so like I don't I don't take any clients that they're like, well, I can't like I, I guess hmm. I, I'm not going to go that direction yet, but <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, no. So it's it's it was just kind of based off of um, what what you felt comfortable with your skill set and the experience that you had at the time, and what you felt like charging somebody. And so, which is in the same in my area, um, same exact area when I would go to work for somebody, is it would be you know, well, one, what can you afford? Okay, this is the job you want. This is the this is what you'll get. Now, yeah, it's not going to look as good as the, it's not going to look as good as the guy that would come here that's doing it professional um, because I'm just starting out. However, the price for what I'm giving you is significantly lower than the guy that would come and make, you know, uh, just for landscaping, you know, that would make your lawn look like, you know, the White House lawn. Um, so you have different areas there. And so I think it's like you grow and scale. Uh, you also grow in the amount that you're able to charge. Um, so this is what we, this is what I can offer. Um, and then also the, uh, what's the other term? Um, uh, supply and demand. That's, that's also comes into effect. Um, so I think yeah. it's, I think I'm going to say this. I, I'm pretty sure it's accurate. It was accurate at one point in time. But uh, some HVAC people that I was talking to for a while, it was like, yeah, we just have to charge higher prices because there's so many people and there's so very few HVAC people. So the price just goes up because of the demand. And so this is who we're able to help, uh, which then supplies a perfect, <laughs> a perfect area for somebody who starts out that doesn't know what they're doing because somebody's going to be out there and they're going to say, I can't afford that company. Um, that sends a guy out. But what I can afford is this guy over here that just started and he can come work on my AC or my heating system. And so it's kind of nice. Um, you always see things kind of fluctuate um, in the freelance world uh, that way. And so, but that, that's my thoughts on it. Is that kind of how you felt and going through everything that you went through? Well, there, I feel like social media marketers managers content creators like a dime a dozen like like there's so many of them um the thing that kind of set me apart though was more of i think i would say my brand but then also my approach to getting clients like it was authentic and like i'd start conversations with people just and then like see if i could offer them any value like i i'd get on a sales call but like i wouldn't walk them through the script and just be like reading line by line can you answer this can you answer that this 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 you know it was more like getting to know their their needs finding a pain point addressing the pain point providing some value and then offering a price based off of what they could afford for the service or what was within their budget you know like i wasn't trying to you know like I, like be shady you know in it but i was also trying to provide value so a lot of people like when i was on these calls and meeting with people and talking about pricing they're like i i appreciate your approach like it was authentic you know um but yeah let's talk about like how you got people how you got clients initially that would be interesting to hear because you're in the physical world, I was more digital. Um, but I can go first if that's cool with you, I guess. Yeah, sure, you go for it. <laughs> uh, well, okay, so starting out, like trying to find clients online was pretty hard. I, I think my first Instagram page that I was trying to reach out with, it was a new personal brand page. I only had like a thousand followers on it and nobody answered dms like nobody i'd send someone a dm and they'd be like nah like they just ignore it um 
or like I'd be on these freelancing sites and I've hired people from freelancing sites, don't get me wrong, but like I never found success on them. And, and maybe it's because I just didn't really focus in on those freelancing sites as much. But um, what I ended up doing was just growing a Instagram page and starting to reach out to people from there. So a lot of it was cold DMs and that's cool. But now I've got a guy who helps me and he just sends all the DMs for me. Um, on a daily basis, he sends like 15 to 20 new DMs a day. And if people ignore it, that's cool. But there's also, you know, some, if one person ignores it, 19 other people might not. So at scale, you know, you, you meet new people, you get on some calls, and you can provide some value, build relationships, get people on podcasts. Like my approach has been more um, built it in public and then reached out from a place of authenticity. And now, obviously, I guess it wouldn't be as authentic because it's not me, but I, I try to, uh, you know, if it do doesn't sound like I'm sending the message, I'm like, okay, this is not how we're going to do this. <laughs> this is not how I sound. This is, this. I'm not going to throw shade on someone's business, you know, something like that. So, um, yeah, and I, I did that for a year. I think the highest month that I made, the highest amount of money I made in a month was seven, seven thousand. Oh wow! Just doing that. So, and obviously, I had, I had some gigs on the side, so it made a little bit more. But yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a little different for me. Mine was mostly uh, word of mouth, and uh, I don't know if there's like places that you go. Like, I don't know what the equivalent is to your freelancing versus to my freelancing. It's like I would go to the lumber store or this store and I would leave business cards there or I would, you know, let them know, hey, here's my name and phone number. If anybody's ever looking for, you know, just someone to come and do some work without having to pay a, a larger amount for a company. That was that's what I would offer a lot of times at different lumber yards and stuff and i would talk to the person over the counter and they would take my number and they would say hey yeah we will a lot of people come in and ask that um for someone that might be cheaper because there was a lot of lower income people that can't afford but you know companies but would need somebody that they could afford on an hourly rate and not a uh not a um uh, um bid rate um so i'll just use it that way um, and the difference between that is, you know, you bid something, you're bidding, hey, this is how much the whole project's going to cost and everything um, versus um, an hourly rate, which normally you get cheaper when you go an hourly rate. Um, so that's kind of how uh, I got different different clients. It's mostly word of mouth and um, just showing my work and making sure that every single time I did a job, it was the everything looked very, very nice and it was uniform um roofing jobs uh remodeling all of that um and i i was i was able to charge um i mean there was definitely some customers that turned me down they didn't want me uh, to work for them uh because they they felt that i charged too much especially as like when you're 17 and you're like at, at me at 17 i was like yep i want i want eventually i think i said 17 or 18 i was like i want 15 an hour so that's my that's my rate and i remember a lady was like that seems awfully high because back then it was high <laughs> i said well this is what you're going to get this is you're going to get someone that knows what they're doing pays attention to detail and uh this is what you're going to get and so i had some customers turn me down but i was okay um i was kind of right in that stage of of growing to the next level um and so yeah, it's just, uh, and growing up and it definitely helped because um, I knew what I was doing. I've, I'd watched people do it so many times. Uh, for me, it, it helped to see somebody do it and then I could replicate it and do it better. Um, and so, yeah, but mostly the way I gained my clients was word of mouth. Um, I didn't really do a whole lot of advertising. Um, and uh, people would see my work. I could tell people like, hey, or somebody was like, well, what do you do? It's like, I, I, you know, I do construction. 
It's like, oh, do you guys do roofs? It's like, yeah. It's like, well, what? It's like, you do roofs here in Parsons? It's like, yeah, if you drive down this road here, I could tell them, you know, and localize it. It's like, if you drive down this road here, every house on that road, <laughs> I roofed. <laughs> you can look at them. <laughs> you can tell me if that's something you want. And so it was very visual too. Um, and that was really, that was a really impressive part of, <laughs> that was like one of the most, I felt like it was so impressive. I was like, yeah, drive down that road, everything on the right hand side, all those roofs, I put them on. <laughs> that was almost like a bragging point for me. Um, and so it was very easy to show my work, just like you show your work. It's like, okay, here's a count with 10,000, 10,000 views or 10,000 followers. It's like, okay, here's, here's a road with, uh, several of those and you know i could tell them like hey here's a here's a lawn that i take care of here's uh here's some images of things now a lot of construction guys actually have an instagram page and you can say hey go on the instagram page you can look through all the remodels which is great um because you will grow your business so fast if you do that because then somebody can hop right on and just look and everybody loves everybody loves those videos of before and after like you could just get caught on those and so but yeah, that was that was kind of the way that I I branched out was just word of mouth. And so yeah, that's that's the best way, man. Referrals and word of mouth. Yeah, I yeah. I like how you said the visual part of it too, because like if if you're a designer, like creating like nice designs and publishing them on social media, like is a way for people to be like, oh, I'd like to see that done for me, you know yeah visual is always i i've i've experienced that if somebody can see it and it looks good and it brings a sense of success like or a, uh oh the job a is finished feeling. it's great it brings a great feeling to be able to see your work for both you and the customer and so yeah absolutely yeah that's a good that's a good point yeah because like people see your roof and they're like i want a roof like that i need my roof done um did you cut out or are you just like frozen that's good oh there we go in my back uh kind of frozen a little bit It's not informed that my Wi-Fi would be being messed with. Maybe that'll help right there. Not informed. Normally they inform me if they're working on the, on the stuff. Oh, oh, it cleared up though. So there we go. I saw the bar go down. I was like, mm, that's weird. <laughs> and, then it, and then it froze, looked up and it was like, oh, you're frozen. Okay. All right. Well, we're back here. But, yeah, I think the last time, last thing I was talking about was just design. Like, like if you can, if you could just record yourself doing whatever the work, whether that's power washing or um, designing a logo or, you know, like even, I mean, just whatever the process is that you're trying to sell your services for, if you can record yourself doing it, and there's like any, like you could do whatever and still record it. And, and show that before and after and that finished result. You could be online doing that. You can be offline showing people like it's, you know, it's usable anywhere yeah. and then easy to get sales. Yeah, visual. Easier at least. <clears throat> visual is always good. Yeah, for me, I started to get into the area of where um, I was, I, I was bidding jobs. So I had more of a set rate and I don't know what that looks like for you, um, but obviously before I was like, okay, I'll just do this hourly. And then I got into the, okay, no, I'm just going to bid them. And the reason I started bidding them is because one, I, I felt that I was at the stage where I did a excellent job and I did it quickly. And for, for as nice as it looked and the time that I took, um, you were better off getting a bid um and so i would bid the job um and eventually i would you know i would get to the point where i was fast enough that 
it looked good and I made money off of bidding it rather than uh, doing it hourly. But you still make money doing it off hourly. It's just that it's, um, you don't, there's no bonus to getting it done faster. There's no incentive to get it done faster. Um, but also that kind of comes into our honesty also. Uh, because if you milk something out and you're working hourly, somebody else is going to see that and say, okay, now your character starts to dwindle and you don't want that. Um, so it's always good to work your, your hardest, not overwork yourself, but work yourself to, you know, a good standing degree so that a, a consistent work ethic, I, I should say, so that people know what to expect. And so... Oh, I lost, I lost sound there. No, that me? you didn't lose sound. I was muted. Um, oh, <laughs> is it kind of loud outside gotcha. the room? But no, I think that's a good point. Like you have a really good point bidding on value rather than hourly. I think, yeah. Yeah, because like, especially as you become more skilled, like you're going to get way quicker at doing the job so yeah. like it, it you, you want to be rewarded for that making a quarter or an eighth of what you should have made for the job right yeah you know so yeah. definitely bidding on on the it's like one one thing i hated to do was painting and i i, I hate i hate painting it's it's i it, it annoys me but i would do it because i was good at it um, I don't know why I found it so annoying. It was just very tedious and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm like a perfectionist a bit, but, um, I, I would always bid my paint jobs. Like, I think I did one hourly. Um, and then after that I was like, no, I'm bidding these. Um, because by the time I got done with it, you know, and after skill of getting quick with being tedious, um, I, I said, no, I, I should be rewarded for this and I don't like it. So <laughs> I don't have to do it. I have all these other areas I can go. I mean, people paid it. People paid, uh, and it was a ridiculous rate for my age. It was absolutely ridiculous. I, I, I started to like painting because of what I made. <laughs> um, like, uh, it was just, it was, it was pretty, it was, it was a whole lot better. And people, people liked it because of the attention to detail. Um, and so, yeah, I think one, as far as like raising your prices go, one thing that I had heard was that if you, you raise your prices until enough people start to have a problem with it. So like if you, if you bid a job and like, oh, okay, that's good. Then your prices might yeah. be a little too low, you know, but if like two, three, four people in a row are like, eh, that's a little too high. I can't do that. And it's like, okay, maybe lower your prices a little bit and see if you can find a sweet spot. And that's just kind of like time, time taken, you know, especially when you're in that like middle area where you're not like the only one people look to, but you're also not like a beginner, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the way the economy is set up right now is you kind of, to make sure that you don't ever get screwed I hate to say this because I, I don't agree with it at all, but it it's the best way to make sure that you don't get screwed is to always have your price a little higher than what it should probably be. Um, and you say, well, that's not right to the customer. And I agree with you. It's not right to the customer. Um, I, I started to do that a little bit and realized that I had a price that was, that I was overpricing a little bit for, for some customers. And so what I would do is, <clears throat> And also that just comes when you bid something. And so there's so many factors that come in when you're in construction and building stuff. Um, so occasionally, you know, hey, I'm gonna cut you this discount and this is all you have to pay um, because we were able to do things easier um, and things flew very quickly. Um, so now I can move on to the next job. Um, but also it helps to do that um, because one, with the way the economy changes, uh, the prices of things go up, you never know. Um, you lose money if you don't. 
And uh, you can always turn right back around and say to the customer, hey, it didn't end up costing us that much. Um, so we're going to cut this. We're going to give you a discount on this. Um, and and that works. And so. No, I was about to say, yeah, because you can always do more, you know. Like they're going to appreciate yeah. getting their money back, a little bit of money back, or having extra stuff done for them. Like there was this one yeah. client that I I bid him a price and I had, I had done some work for him. And I was like, okay, I could realistically scale this up a little bit more, provide him more value, and it wouldn't take me a lo very much more time. But he'd be a much better off. He'd be much better off for it rather than trying to um, get more money for from him or whatever. So anyways, in the end, I ended up just doing a little bit more extra on top of it because I could. And he's much happier for for that and it benefits him. Right. So like, you can always do more. Oh, yeah. Yep. You can always toss in something extra. Um, yeah. So anyways, I think that was a uh, how we got started, right? How we got started doing freelancing or contract work. That's a good good stopping point. Unless you got anything to add, man. I got a little bit to add. Is okay. I think I think the key thing when you decide to do freelancing and whether it will it will determine whether you're a um, uh successful at it or not is your honesty and your character just well character in general is if if you don't project yourself and stay consistent with with uh what you say you're providing um very quickly you lose customers and you you won't be successful as a freelancer so that's what i would add to that yeah you're you're right because there's like that's something that I've heard a lot, actually, and I'm glad you brought it up. Is that, like, it's rare to find someone extremely consistent, extremely responsive, and then who does consistent quality work, because there's a lot of flaky people out there that, honestly, I did not realize, <laughs> but it makes sense, you know. So, like, there's yeah. a, there's a lot of people that try, say they're gonna do all this for you, and then they just they can't deliver on it, or they won't. Yeah, yeah, word gets around, and and like not only that, uh, you know, a key thing is like you may go work for a customer, and uh, how how would I explain? It's like you you may not know who they are, and they're reaching the community around you, and so when you do them wrong, you didn't just do them wrong; you did all of his friends wrong, because now your company name, especially if you have a company name, now if you're just a singular person going around. They'll probably forget about it. But if you have a company name behind, your name is getting drugged through the dirt. I, I guarantee it. It will get drugged through the dirt one way or the other. And it's it's not good for your uh for your for your company name for the way that you look. Yeah. That's a good point. Especially in small, small towns. Oh yeah, small especially areas. in small towns. Or yep. travels really fast oh, yeah. oh fast 